Three decades ago, most arcade games were all about score or indirect competition between two people. Today, head-to-head -head fighting games are a popular genre and also happen to fill sports stadiums with fans ready to watch high-caliber play. While Capcom's original Street Fighter obviously didn't feature all the bells and whistles of modern fighting games, it undoubtedly laid the foundation of what was to come. Now, as you might imagine, the original 1987 Street Fighter was a game of firsts. Players were introduced to both Ryu and Ken, the only two playable characters in the game. Player 1 is Ryu, and if someone else put in a credit and both started the game at the same time, the other person was Ken. The winner moved on to face the computer in a normal one-player mode, and you could not challenge that player again. That said, Street Fighter 1 did introduce the world to characters who would return in later games. Adon, Gen, Birdie, and the final boss, Sagat. Ryu and Sagat's showdown at the end of the game may not seem all that dramatic here, but their battle actually factors into Sagat's overall story for the rest of the series. Other firsts for the series included bonus stages and victory quotes after you beat your opponent. But unlike Street Fighter 2, the Street Fighter 1 quotes were actually voiced, even though everybody had the same win and loss quotes. Ryu's three iconic moves have been here since the beginning. The Hadouken, Tatsumaki Senpukyaku, and Shoryuken. They were fairly difficult to pull off, but if you timed it just right, the Shoryuken and Tatsu could take out other characters in one motion. These moves were unique due not only to their power, but also the way the players had to perform certain motions to execute the moves. They were secret techniques meant to be discovered. There were two Street Fighter variants in the arcades back in the day. One with pressure sensitive punch and kick buttons players had to physically strike that could result in three varying strengths and a later version that opted to separate each strength of attack into their own button, leading to the usual six-button layout the series uses today. Street Fighter 1 may not be the most dense or complex fighting game, but there's no denying how important it is to the overall legacy of the series. From characters to moves, and yes, even some initial world-building lore, this laid the groundwork for all Street Fighter titles. It would take four years for a follow-up to appear, but once Street Fighter 2 arrived in 1991, it changed fighting games and arcades forever. The drastic improvements in graphics, sound, playability, and overall presentation made Street Fighter 2 an immediate hit, and within a matter of months, it was a worldwide phenomenon. And this wasn't just happening in arcades, it was in pizza joints, bowling alleys, laundromats, convenience stores, and just about anywhere else an arcade cabinet could fit. A big part of the success was due to the all-new roster of fighters from around the globe. Ryu and Ken returned, but they were joined by a colorful cast that brought the number of playable characters up from just two to eight. All brawlers up to this point usually had a motley crew of enemies to fight, but for the first time, you could actually play as the opponents you encountered. This was actually a really big deal at the time. Each character became a legend in his or her own right, from military man Guile to Chun-Li, the strongest woman in the world. Their signature moves, costumes, and catchphrases all got their start right here. Bonus stages returned now updated to piles of flaming barrels and the now iconic car-busting challenge inspired by the Final Fight series. And if players stopped fighting each other long enough to fight through all the CPU opponents, an additional four characters appeared, the AI-controlled Grandmasters who acted as both final challengers for the player and as villains for the game's stories. Sagat returned, but now with a huge scar running the length of his chest. The story goes that Ryu didn't just defeat Sagat all those years ago, 
He ripped him up using the Shoryuken as a final blow, giving him the now signature scar on his chest. These little character touches became known thanks to each character's colorful ending scenes. It's here we learn how Chun-Li and Guile both have similar agendas to find the evil final boss, M. Bison, and that Blanca used to be a normal human boy. These series of plot points from each character formed a timeline of events, and thanks to Sagat's storyline, we knew that Street Fighter II took place after the original game. While the visual updates to Street Fighter II were substantial, the gameplay enhancements were on a whole other level. Just as Ryu and Ken had special abilities in the first game, now there were six other fighters that players had to explore. Fans would spend days trying to figure out how to throw a sonic boom or pull off Zangief's spinning pile driver. The good news is that special moves in Street Fighter 2 were far more consistent and reliable than the original game, thanks to improved controls. With some practice under your belt, you could start linking these normal attacks into a character's special moves, creating a robust combo system that forever changed the series, and in some way, games as a medium. The ability to string attacks together like this enabled players to create their own playstyles and express their personalities through in-game combat. You could also grab and throw your opponents, adding even more of a street fight feel to the game. Naturally, all these options led to a genuine fighting game scene and true competition began to take shape. Everyone's minds were lit up with the possibilities. But it wouldn't be long before Street Fighter II evolved. Street Fighter II Champion Edition released in 1992 with two huge updates. First, the four boss characters from the original version were now playable characters, bringing the playable count up to 12. Players could finally control Sagat, as well as M. Bison, the final boss of not just the original Street Fighter II, but the entire Street Fighter II series. Balrog the Boxer and Vega also became regular parts of the game's ever-expanding roster. The second major change was the ability for two players to pick the same character. Before, if someone got to Dalsum before you, <laughs> that was just too bad. Now, with mirror matches, you could have these reality-shattering battles between two Hondas, two Kens, or whoever your heart desired. There were many minor graphical changes as well, including character headshots. And some of the ending graphics saw updates too. Chun-Li's iconic blue outfit replaced her golden costume seen in World Warriors, and Ryu looked a bit sterner, for example. There were minor changes made, but Ryu and Ken received the first of many alterations meant to distinguish them from each other. As students of the same teacher, it made sense for their movesets to closely mirror each other, but here they began to develop their own styles. For example, Ryu's hurricane kick knocked opponents down in one hit, while Ken's hit multiple times. Over time, these two will really head down different paths. As players dug into this revised roster, they discovered that the end boss M. Bison was perhaps too strong, with devastating moves that could overpower other characters. When you play Champion Edition in the SF30 collection, be sure to give him a try. This wasn't the last time Street Fighter 2 would be updated in 1992, however. Hyper Fighting debuted later in the same year, acting as a more thorough update of Champion Edition. The primary change was to the game's battle speed, which was cranked up to make competition more hectic and fierce. Most characters received new default colors. Check out Guile's blue camo, for instance. Further adjustments were made to the roster, with some receiving all new moves. Chun-Li could now throw a fireball, but this Kokoken is still a work in progress. Zangief received a second Lariat that was much quicker and could slip through sweeps. This version of the game revitalized the competitive arcade scene in many ways. It was rebalanced based on feedback to Champion Edition, and new techniques were continually being discovered. The extra speed also added a new layer to the game that most pros really enjoyed. Imagine walking into an arcade in 1993 expecting to see your usual hyper fighting machine. And in its place, 
is an all new version with this stunning Ryu animation staring you in the face. Super Street Fighter 2 was a dramatic reimagining of the game from top to bottom, with all new character profiles, ending screens, sound effects, background details, and best of all, four completely new characters. These new challengers have since become world famous fighters on the same level as the prior 12. DJ, Fei Long, T Hawk, and Kami would all return in subsequent Street Fighter games, with Kami appearing most recently in Street Fighter V. Super Street Fighter II also introduced an in game scoring system that awarded points for certain moves. This included certain terminology that's still in use today, like reversals and first attacks. Obviously, four new characters are going to freshen up match potential and the overall health of the game. Each of the new characters brought something new to the table. Fei Long used his unique martial arts skills to deal rapid damage in ways players hadn't seen before. Players who loved grappling had another powerhouse to consider, the high-flying T-Hawk. Kami, a British fighter with a mysterious background, offered a quick in-and-out play style. And finally, DJ used tactics to dominate both the ground and the air. But the main roster received a fair amount of attention as well. Ryu and Ken continued their divergent paths by receiving different fire-based attacks, with Ryu throwing a flaming Hadouken and Ken debuting his flaming Shoryuken, a character staple to this day. Chun-Li's Kikoken finally got its signature pose too. But the four Shadaloo bosses were especially enhanced, gaining many new moves and many new beautiful animations. The game speed was slowed back down to pre-hyperfighting levels, though this would be a temporary rollback. 1994 gave us Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Its spruced up attract mode integrated Kami and Chun-Li into the mix, and near the end we saw the first glimpses of Akuma, who made his debut here as a hidden boss. It would take a long time for players to even discover that Akuma was actually usable as well, being selectable through an elaborate process on the character select screen, though this power obsessed demon would soon become a regular part of the series. And as you might have guessed by the name, the speed had been jacked back up to hyper fighting levels, though it was possible to adjust the speed even beyond that. With years of adjustments and balances under their belt, the Street Fighter roster was already bursting with refined strength. But what could really push it over the top? How about super combos? All new devastating moves that could completely turn the tide of a match. And if you managed to finish off your opponent with one of these high risk moves, you were treated to a sense shattering star burst that told the whole room you just won. Super Turbo also brought us air combos, which allowed players to hit opponents in the air then essentially juggle them into other moves or even super combos. This really changed the way the game was played. Air combos added a new element for players to explore, which helped define an all new core feature for future fighting games. At this point, characters had changed quite a bit since the original 1991 Street Fighter 2. Super Turbo acknowledged this by offering the older versions of each character, which provided even more playstyles and options. One interesting result of this move was that the original version of Sagat within the world of Super Turbo turned out to be one of the strongest characters in the game. He was even soft banned in Japanese tournaments. There is no doubt about Street Fighter 2's place in video game history, but it's more than that. Its impact on popular culture is undeniable. Most people still remember Ryu and Chun-Li, the series ended up in well-known lines of toys. It had TV shows, movies, and more product tie-ins than you can show you can your fist at. Its characters, music, and visuals are known the world over, including Guile's original theme song becoming a popular internet meme even just a few years ago. But after 30 years since the first game, and more than 25 years since Street Fighter 2, perhaps the biggest testament to the Street Fighter 2 series is that both Hyper Fighting and Super Turbo still command healthy tournament presences all around the globe, even decades later.